Hey everyone, this video will have two parts. In the first part of the video, I'm gonna discuss the various routes you can take to calculate compensation and help you try to decide which one's gonna work best for you. And then in the second part of the video, I'll give you some tips with Flojo and walk you through the software. Now there's a lot of options available to calculate compensation, but generally we can divide them into these four categories. There are automated tools, ways to make manual adjustments, the software that's used to run the cytometer itself, and analysis software such as Flojo or FCS Express that you can run on your own personal computer. Really, the setup looks something like this, where we have both automated compensation tools and ways to manually modify compensation in both the cytometer and analysis software applications. Now you're probably wondering if one software is better than the other, and in general, I would say no. Instead, I've come up with three different questions to help you decide which route is gonna work out best for you. The first question is, do you want to do a quick analysis while samples are being recorded? Some people get really excited and want to know the results of their experiment immediately, while others prefer to wait until they can take the time to do a proper analysis. This is entirely a personal preference, but if you do want to do that quick analysis while you're running samples, then you need to compensate using the cytometer software. The second question is how much time do you have or need to spend on compensation? There are several factors to consider before you can fully answer this question, but I bring it up because most people will have a limited amount of time to use the cytometer software, especially if you're using a core facility where you have to schedule a set amount of time and you're being charged for that time. If you instead do compensation on analysis software, you can take as much time as you need. On that note, you'll need to determine how much time it takes for you to calculate compensation. Manual compensation tends to take a little longer than automated tools, and the larger your panel, the more you will need to spend on compensation. Again, it's up to you to decide what's best, but to give you a very general recommendation, I would recommend to consider your experience level. Beginners tend to fall over here. So if you're new to flow cytometry, my recommendation is to compensate on the cytometer software. This will allow you to feel confident that the cytometer settings, such as voltages, are correct. After running the first fully stained sample, you can draw some gates, make sure that you can find populations you're expecting to find. If your data looks terrible, then you still have time to make adjustments to the cytometer settings if needed before you run the rest of your experiment. And just to be clear, if you do end up needing to adjust cytometer settings like voltages, you might wanna ask someone more experienced like a, the Flowcore staff to help you. And once you've made those adjustments, you will need to rerun all of your controls on the new settings and recalculate compensation. If you are more experienced and feel comfortable setting up the cytometer properly, you might choose not to compensate on the cytometer at all and only do compensation in analysis software. Finally, the third question is, do you need access to FCS files on multiple computers or share them with someone? I bring up this point because I think it's important to understand how the software deals with the compensation matrix. When you do compensation on the cytometer, you will always be exporting FCS files at the end of your session on the cytometer. That export will package the compensation matrix inside of the FCS file. If your compensation is perfect, then this file is all you need, and if you share it with someone else in your lab, or someone comes back to the data after you've left the lab, then it's very easy for them to just go straight to gating the data. However, if you do compensation in the analysis software, you should be aware of how your analysis software deals with the compensation matrix. Analysis software programs don't necessarily package the compensation matrix into the FCS file automatically. You might need to take extra steps to make sure the compensation can be transferred to another computer or person. I'll give you a quick tutorial on how to do this in Flojo in the second part of this video. Hopefully thinking through these three questions helped you decide the route that will work best for you but there is still one very important note to consider. Compensation can be calculated and recalculated as many times as you want. In practice, that means that some people choose to do sort of a hybrid method. 
So they may quickly do compensation on the cytometer software, knowing that they've done it in a rush and there may be a few minor compensation errors, but it allows them to get a preview of their fully stained samples as they're sitting there running them on the cytometer. Then once they move their data into analysis software applications, they know that compensation needs to be fixed or maybe even completely redone from scratch before they can make gates and calculate statistics. This brings me to my final point, which is that you always need to be checking that compensation is correct before you move on to drawing gates to analyze your data and make any sort of conclusions from your data. Correctly compensated data means that the MFI of the positive population matches the MFI of the negative population. Everyone needs to be checking for this in every experiment even if you're using automated compensation tools. There are a lot of ways to set up automated tools incorrectly, and you should never assume that those automated tools are magically going to do a great job every single time. Always check the compensation by looking at n by n plots of your controls. That means making plots to view every color against every color and checking that all of your single stain controls look like this plot here. If these populations are not aligning like this plot shows, then that means you probably have issues with the compensation that need to be addressed. I'll put some references in the YouTube description box to help you properly set up automated compensation tools and troubleshoot compensation issues. For the final part of this video, I wanted to point out a few things in Flojo because I know we have a lot of users in our facility that use Flojo. First, I wanna show you how to identify if your FCS files already have a compensation matrix packaged into them or not. Immediately after importing your files into a Flojo workspace, you can check this square icon here. Either it will be empty or it will have a grid in it. For specimen one, you can see that it's empty and that indicates that there is no compensation matrix packaged into this particular FCS file. The second file here does have a grid in the square and that means that there is a compensation matrix packaged into it. If we wanna view the file, we can just double click on that square for any tube. And you'll also notice that this matrix is labeled acquisition defined, which is another hint that this compensation matrix was calculated by the cytometer software and is packaged inside of that FCS file. If you would like to change the acquisition defined compensation, there are a couple ways to do that, but it can get a little tricky deciding which modifications are scientifically appropriate to make. In this video, I'll show you what is possible with Flojo, but I will put some references in the YouTube description box to help you understand what is scientifically appropriate for your experiment. Now, the first option is to manually modify the acquisition defined matrix. When you click this edit button here, it will ask if you want to create a new one. I'll say yes. This will duplicate the acquisition defined matrix, and now you can enter any values into the matrix yourself as is appropriate for the experiment. Remember that single stain controls should be used to assess if your compensation is correct or not. You can change the color of your matrix. And if you do that, you can see that the color of the grid changes, which will indicate that this sample has the red matrix applied to it. I can even apply the new matrix to other samples using this M button here. I'll just click and drag it over either onto an individual tube or I can drag it up to a group or the all samples. Once I do that, it will apply to all the tubes in the group. If you instead want to start from scratch, there's a couple of options. You can make a brand new empty matrix by clicking on this plus button here, and then new identity matrix. You'll select the parameters you want to use, and that will generate a new matrix that has no values inside of it. Alternatively, you can use Flojo's automated compensation tool. To do that, you'll first need to put your controls into this compensation group and that will allow you to then use this button here which will get you into the automated compensation tool. When you create a new matrix from the automated compensation tool 
it will be listed in this list of matrices here. And you can also change the colors, apply them to the different tubes or groups. And if you really wanted to, you could make additional manual modifications to the matrix. Again, you need to make sure that any changes you make are scientifically appropriate. The final thing I want to talk about is saving and exporting. Whatever was modified in Flojo itself only exists in the Flojo workspace. That means that if you open the original FCS files somewhere else, they are still going to have the original acquisition defined matrix in them. If you want to share or move the new compensation, you have three options. You can export new FCS files with the new Flojo compensation matrix packaged inside or you can export just the matrix itself, or you can save the entire Flojo workspace to include your files and compensation matrixes. Since I have this compensation window open, I'll first show you how to just export the compensation matrix. You will click on this save matrix button. I typically choose the Flojo matrix file, and then you will tell Flojo where you want to save your matrix. Once someone has this file, they can import it into any Flojo workspace by going into this compensation window, clicking on this plus button, and selecting from file. You can then locate the matrix file and it will be imported and listed here. The second option is to export a brand new FCS file. So you can select all of the files that you want to export, then right click and select export. You can choose which parameters to export. Maybe you just want all compensated parameters, or maybe you want to select a custom set of parameters. You can also tell Flojo where to save your files. When you click the export button, that will generate brand new FCS files that have the Flojo compensation matrix packaged into it. The final option is to save the entire workspace. By default, your workspaces will be saved as a WSP file, which means that it's just the workspace and the FCS files are stored separately. This keeps the size of the WSP file small, but it means that if you move to a different computer or send this to someone, it can be a little bit complicated. You'll need to also send them separate FCS files. And then once the WSP file is opened on the new computer, you'll get an error message because you need to tell Flojo where the FCS files are now located on the new computer. To simplify things, you may choose to save in a different format. If you click this button here and then go to save as, you have the option to choose a archive file. So instead of the WSP file type, it will be an ACS file. And if you save it in this format, it will package everything, the workspace, the FCS files, and the compensation matrices. If you share an ACS file with someone, it will be a larger file size, but they just need to open it and it will be ready to use. That's it for this tutorial. I hope it was helpful. You can check out the YouTube description box for additional references and check out and subscribe to our YouTube channel for more videos on flow cytometry.